Hello everyone, this is Dan, and in this video I will be giving you an introduction to Comic Life 3. I will use it to make an example comic, similar to what you might ask your students to make in your course. Um, and it may seem intimidating at first, with all the different options and templates and customizable elements, but once you get the hang of it, it's really easy to use. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to need to do is go to the manufacturer's website which is plasq.com. Once you get to the page, you're going to have to go to support and then click downloads. Then you'll be presented with different versions depending on the computer you're using. Um, in my example, I'm using a Windows desktop, so I'll click this version to download it. Once that's done, you'll get the installer that you're familiar with. Just follow through these steps. Um, I already have it installed on my computer, so it's going to look a little bit different. But once you go through, you'll be able to install it in your default location and set it up for users on your machine. All right, so I'll go ahead and open it now. Uh, this is Comic Life version 3. You'll get pop ups letting you know that uh, you're just using a trial version and you have 30 days to use it. So you can say don't want to register yet. Once you have all the different prompts and agreements closed out, you are presented with the template chooser. Um, Comic Life does a pretty good job of giving you a variety of templates to help your students get started with whatever project it is that you assign them. If the project you'll be assigning to your students is going to be a longer comic that involves multiple pages, you can recommend using a script template. This will allow them to lay out their ideas and be more effective at conveying them into the actual comic strip. Some of the comic templates they offer are these creative ones, which are single panels. They have how-tos, which are useful in a lot of different situations. Uh, but for this example, we will be using a blank template. Then that way I'll be able to show you a little bit more of how to use the software. I feel that Comic Life is most useful for allowing your students to express something or show their knowledge in a way that's a little bit more fun and a little bit more expressive. So let's get started with this example. Um, the reason why I selected styles is that it allows you to change the background of the comic to kind of give it a little bit more flavor or texture. You can see down along the bottom of the page, you have the different elements that you can insert into the comic. Uh, for right now, I'm going to use a lettering, and then you just click and drag it up to where you want it. it. Takes a second, and then it allows you to type in what you're going to do. So for this example, I'm going to be making a comic on how a law is made. So I'll just give it its title, how a law is made. And then once you have the words down, you can use this selection tool over on the left to change the lettering to whatever you might want it to be. So I'll just do something a little more common. And then if the element isn't where you want it, you can click and drag wherever you want it to be. And it also will give you the snap lines that'll show you when it's lined up with either the margins or the center of the page. The next element that I want to add to the comic is going to be a panel. So you just select the panel down at the bottom, then drag it up to where I want it. You can also resize these once they're there. So I'm going to make this one a little bit wider. All right, and now we need to put something inside of the panel. Uh, to do that, you can have different albums that you pre-installed into the software which we're not going to do for this example. Instead, I'll go to my Explorer and then select a folder that I already have on my computer with the pictures that I'm going to be using. I just downloaded these earlier and then made a folder and put them in there. Uh, so for the first panel, we're going to select these towns people and then just drag and drop them in. You can also, once you have them in there, move and shrink the images, which is nice. And now we'll add some words to the panel. So we just select one of the dialog boxes. I'll use a 
regular bubble. And then we'll type in whatever it is. So for the townspeople, I'll have them say, these conditions are unjust. We demand protection. All right. Once you have the words in, you can click off of the object and then drag it to where you want. I'm going to put it up in the corner of the panel. And then you drag this small blue circle wherever you want it to go as the source of the of the comment. So I'll just drag it into the general crowd. And now we need to add the second panel. I'm going to put it right alongside the first one. So I'm going to make this just a little bit smaller. You have to make sure you get the bubble adjusted after you make any changes to the overall size of the panel. So we're going to add another smaller one. And then you can use these guidelines again to help make sure that you're squared away and in line with the other elements. Now I'm going to add a lawmaker into it. And I'll have him saying, or I'll use a think bubble for this one. I think this law will help our citizens. Uh, this also has spell check features. Um, if you just right click on something that you believe is misspelled, and then you can select the right word. Make sure that the sizing is good. And then want to move the think bubble again. And there we go with the second of the panels. All right, so let's add another panel down below. Resize it the way we want. Line it up. Actually, let's make this one about four inches wide. You can also copy something. So I just copied this box, and then I'm going to paste in a duplicate by right-clicking. That way, these two will be the same size. Uh, so we're going to add in this image for the House of Representatives. And we can add another chat bubble and say something like So once they send it over, add an image for the Senate. And do something similar. Um, All right, so there's a lot of text in here, so you can make the bubble bigger to allow for more room. Same thing with these ones before. Uh, make this one. You can also see it pushes down the words depending on the size. All right, and then move the point. Then we can add one final box down below. and add in the image, President Mickey Mouse here. And then you can also add in different forms of boxes instead of just chat bubbles. Uh, for this one, we'll add a script box. Let me undo since it went up to the top. And we'll just add it right in here. The president signed the bill into law. And it was a great day for the nation. Then we can just move this where it needs to be. All 
All right, and that's the basics of inserting a comic and building out a comic using comic. Once the student has a comic completed, they can go through and export it, which is how you would send it out to be printed or saved as an image to be emailed. Uh, once you go down to export, you can do PDF, image, EPUB if it's going to be used on an e-reader or a CBZ file. You can also save the work as you go along. And when you hit save, it'll just be a comic life file. That way you can close it out and come back to it later if you're not completed with everything right then. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial video. I hope you found this information useful and will make use of Comic Life 3 in your classroom.